So people keep asking me, Josh, what are the best movies of 2017? What are the worst movies of 2017? So I'm making two lists here. One of the best, one of the worst. Now, the qualifiers for this are, I didn't see every movie, obviously. Like, The Snowman is not going to wind up on my worst list because I didn't go see that. And there's a lot of movies I'm going to leave off both lists because they were just okay. Something like Get Out. I didn't like it. I didn't hate it. It was an okay movie, so it doesn't wind up on either list. Now, both of these lists are going to be not be top tens. They are each going to just in- encompass what I liked or didn't like, and I'll go into a short explanation of why. The films I didn't like this year, and yeah, this is a longer list, but you've got stuff like Logan. Everybody loved Logan. I, I didn't see it till two or three weeks into its release, and everyone was telling me how fantastic Logan was. Oh my god, this is so good. The owner of my comic book store told me that if this wasn't a comic book movie, it would be nominated for Oscars. I went in and I saw a vapid movie full of plot holes, full of shallow characters, full of predictable plot points. It was ugly. The director decided that he was going to make an un-X-Men X-Men movie, and that's fine, but I think he did it wrong. And he's like, hey, we can swear now. So let's say fuck every chance we get. Instead of using fuck as a way to punctuate a scene, it's just Logan says fuck constantly. I did not like this movie. I just, it was not a good movie. And I'm thinking all these people that loved it, you guys saw a different cut of this film than I did because we did not see the same movie. Then you got Blade Runner 2049, which is one of the most pretentiously bad films I've seen in a long time. I'll have a link in the description to my full review, so I'll gloss over this one. But Blade Runner 2049 fucking sucked. And when you listen to the full review, I had a bad cold when I recorded it, so that's why I sound a little weird in that one. You've got Justin Price, horrendous alien reign of man, which is, it might be the most incompetent film I've seen in 2017. It's so bad, I almost can't even describe it. It's got, I mean, I get it, it's low budget, and Justin Price is not a very good director. And I'll give him a little bit for being low budget, but that doesn't mean you can clearly have the actors reading off cue cards. That doesn't mean the framing can be off to the point where everyone's heads are cut off because you shot it open mat and then threw black bars on it. You can't have the audio and video being out of sync. In my in my reviewer copy, I actually thought my copy was out of sync for a while because there was almost a whole scene where the audio and the video didn't sync up. No, it was just bad syncing the rest of the movie was fine. Alien Reign of Man is incompetent. And I think that's actually worse than making a bad movie, is making an incompetent movie. You got Triple X Return of Xander Cage. My girlfriend made me watch this because she loves both Ruby Rose and Vin Diesel. It, it, okay, if this was a satire on bro culture and making fun of action movies, it still wouldn't have been good, but it would have been better than this thing. The fact that it's played completely straight makes me think they really thought this terrible dialogue, these terrible plot contrivances, these horrible action scenes were going to entice audiences. And they did not. Man, Return of Xander Cage was horrible. And you've got the Belko experiment. Now, everybody knows I don't like James Gunn. More on that in a little bit. But the Belko experiment was an old script he had laying around, and it just didn't work. The idea of the plot was all right, but there's way too many plot holes. Characters don't act like people in this situation would. They act like characters in a screenplay would act. The Belko experiment was a good idea, and I think it had a bad director. The Wolf Creek guy loves his gore and loves his torture. He's not known for subtlety. The Belko experiment didn't work for me, and it should have, and that pissed me off. Then you've got, like, Ghost in the Shell. Ghost in the Shell was, and I keep using this word, like with Blade Runner, it was hollow, it was shallow, there was nothing there. I know visually, it ha- and even the story has a lot to do with the original anime, that doesn't make it good, though. <sighs> Ghost in the Shell was maybe one of my biggest disappointments of the year, because I so wanted this movie to be good. I wanted it to be so good, and it just wasn't. And I'm not talking about the whole whitewashing accusations. The character's freaking white in the anime, so don't don't get on me on that. But it just, it wasn't very good. And then you've got Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Again, I don't like James Gunn. I don't like his writing style. He He's one of those guys like Joss Whedon who thinks every character needs to be a snarky asshole. 
Go back through all of his movies and find me one character that's not a snarky asshole. That's all James Gunn seems to be able to write is in snark. And that means you're not a good writer when that's what you, that's the only thing you can write. And Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, it was hammy. The script didn't make sense. It wasn't funny. The characters didn't act the way, again, characters in these situations should. The whole father subplot was just ridiculous. The whole theme of that was, was just beating you over the head with it. Then you have the whole thing Yondu is actually, he really loves Peter and all. Oh yeah, well, you just retconned the first goddamn movie and Yondu's appearance in that. Man, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, I actually walked out of this movie angry. I was mad at how bad this movie was. Because with the budget he had, there's no way this movie should have been this bad. But then again, that's James Gunn. Like I said, I don't think he's a good writer. I've seen a lot of his work. Everything he writes is snarky jerk. And that's not a good writer. He does not have a grasp of character or nuance. And neither does Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. But then you have Alien Covenant, which might be the movie that pissed me off more than any other film in the last decade. Pisses on the entire Alien franchise, all the while Ridley Scott is going, you people are too stupid to see that I made a goddamn masterpiece. Alien Covenant was one of the most insultingly bad films Again, like with Guardians of the Galaxy, I walked out angry. I shouldn't walk out of a movie angry like I did at Alien Covenant. Then you got Wonder Woman. Again, I just like with Logan, I don't know what movie you guys saw, but I didn't see the same movie. I saw a hollow, empty movie full of bland platitudes, full of plot holes, full of characters that don't make any sense, full of fight scenes that just go on and on and on and on. What what did you people see in Wonder Woman? Because I sure as hell didn't see that. The old Linda Carter TV series had more goddamn depth than this thing did. Which brings me to Justice League. I did a whole video on it. Go check out that link. Justice League was a was a, a Frankenfilm train wreck. You've got Tom Cruise's The Mummy. This was supposed to be the whole beginning of that stupid dark universe shit. Wow, did they screw that up. When the car- cameo character, Russell Crowe, is not only the most nuanced and interesting character in your whole movie, you done fucked up, son. The Mummy was terribly written. I mean, it's by Alex Kurtzman, so what do you expect? Terribly directed. Again, it's by Alex Kurtzman, so what do you expect? The guy is one of the biggest fucking hacks out there right now who keeps getting handed franchise after franchise. He's almost as bad as Damien Lindelof in that respect, and I don't understand it. And you got something like Baby Driver. I'm sorry, Baby Driver was a bad movie. The characters don't make any sense. The entire third act is a clear set of reshoots. John Hamm becomes a fucking slasher movie villain for the last half hour of the movie. The use of the soundtrack worked, but the characters, the story... Man, the only thing I really liked about this was Lily, whatever her name is. She was cute as a fucking button in this. But you've got characters like Jamie Foxx. Nobody would work with Jamie Foxx's character in this. Nobody would. He he was such a brutally unrealistic character. It actually took me out of the film every time he opened his goddamn mouth. And then the ending pissed... Okay, the ending is, oh, fuck you. You got Spider-Man Homecoming. Generally, I enjoyed it. I thought the humor actually worked, but the characters are all wrong. And and they didn't let... It wasn't a Spider-Man movie. It was an Iron Man movie with a Spider-Man sheen. I mean, he's got his little Siri suit that does everything for him. Come on, Marvel. Why won't you let Spider-Man Spider-Man? Why does Spider-Man have to Iron Man this? Ugh! The Dark Tower. Do I even need to explain why this disaster of a film is on my worst list? Moving on. You have Thor Ragnarok. Thor Ragnarok was a goddamn bad sitcom. It was a straight-up comedy that wasn't the least bit funny. The humor in this thing is so forced, so labored. Nothing in Thor Ragnarok works. Yes, it's got that 80s style to it, and it's got like a fun attitude. Fine. I actually thought the chick that played Valkyrie, she was the best part of the movie. I thought she gave a great performance and was cute as hell in this. But Thor Ragnarok, I hated it. Again, I was borderline angry. Angry leaving the theater seeing this one. You got Star Wars The Last Jedi to end out the year for me. And again, I did a whole video talking about it, so link down below. This is the movie that killed Star Wars for me. I might just be done with all of Star Wars after Last Jedi. It was that bad for me. That's my worst of the year. Let loose with the comments. I probably have it coming. Go to 1201beyond.com for more. 